Welcome back to Educator.com. This lesson is on atoms and elements. All matter is made up of atoms. Uh, an atom is the smallest form of any type of matter that you can get, with it still being that type of matter. So if we're talking about a certain element like gold, um, a chunk of gold can be broken down and broken down and broken down until you get to a singular atom of gold. So one of these little circles here will be one atom of gold. If you try and break that atom down any further, it's not going to be gold anymore. You can break it down into what we call subatomic particles. Sub meaning less than atomic an atom. So, so particles that are smaller than an atom is what we're looking at. You can break it down into protons, neutrons, and electrons. However, protons and electrons and neutrons are not gold anymore. Okay, so if you want to keep your gold, don't break it past the atom point. An atom is made up of an electron cloud and a nucleus. Okay, and the electron cloud and the nucleus are made up of those subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Uh, electrons are constantly moving around the nucleus and making up what we're calling our electron cloud. Okay, which I've drawn there in blue for you. So in that cloud, you can't always predict where the electrons are going to be, but you can predict kind of based on their energy levels um, in what, how far away from the nucleus they'll be and moving somewhere in this electron cloud. And then inside our nucleus here, uh, that's the center of the atom, and that nucleus holds two subatomic particles. It holds our protons and it holds our neutrons. And I'll spell that correctly with an EU. Our protons and neutrons, those can be broken down even further into what we call quarks. There are six, six different types of quarks, and this research is, is fairly new about breaking it down into quarks. Uh, they discovered six of them, and protons and neutrons are made up of different types of the quarks, but three each. Okay? So we have our nucleus made of protons and neutrons, our electron cloud where our electrons are constantly moving. Okay? And that's the basic atomic structure. And we'll get into how these things are arranged and what kind of charges they have. All right, so the protons, what we said, would, they were located in the nucleus of the atom. Neutrons are also in the nucleus. And electrons were in that electron cloud outside of the nucleus. So they all, well, protons and electrons have electric charges. Uh, a neutron is called neutron because it has a neutral charge. So it's neutral, no electric charge. A proton has a positive electric charge. So you can remember the P for proton and positive. And sometimes we'll draw it with a, a plus sign with a circle around it and that'll help us um, when we're drawing later. If you see the plus with a circle, that's a proton. A neutron will draw with an N with a circle around it. And then an electron has a negative charge. Um, we draw this in, in many different ways. Sometimes an E with a little sign, sometimes just a little negative. We'll, we'll see. These electric charges, the positive and the negative electric charges, are opposites, so they do attract, and positives and positives do repel from one another. Okay? In a neutral atom, the number of protons will equal the number of electrons and the number of neutrons. So if you're looking at something like carbon with six protons, that means that carbon also has six neutrons, and it also has six electrons. And we say it's neutral because the six neutrons have a neutral charge. You have six positive charges for those six protons, and you'll have six negative charges for the six electrons. Plus six and minus six, those will all even each other out. So that whole atom will have no charge. It'll be neutral. 
okay? Oxygen with eight protons also has eight electrons and eight neutrons. And that's a general rule that, that we can definitely live by in uh, middle school and junior high science. Um, we'll find, even today, we'll find um, uh, rule, uh, things that break that rule. But as a general rule, it's something you can live by. The number of protons equals the number of electrons equals the number of neutrons in a neutral atom. Okay, so we're going to look at how these electrons are configured. Um, Electrons in the electron cloud have different amounts of energy. So scientists created a model to model electron configuration to place electrons in, different, in those different energy levels. Um, there's seven of them. We're really only going to get to maybe the first three in, in, in this course. Um, and, and you'll see more as you get further and further into your chemistry career. But for now, let's just stick with the first couple of levels. The electrons in the energy levels closest to the nucleus have less energy than the electrons in levels further away from the nucleus. So if this is my nucleus right here in blue, and then I have my first energy level here, and then my second energy level here. The electrons in energy level two have a higher energy level. They have more energy than those in uh, energy level one. So these will have lower energy. Okay. Electrons completely fill the levels closest to the nucleus before being placed in the levels further away from the nucleus. So we'll fill energy level one before we move on to energy level two. That's a rule you have to live by. Fill the inner levels, then go to outer levels. Okay, no skipping. Um, the inner levels are completely filled before moving out. The first level is filled at two electrons. The second level is filled with eight electrons. And every level after that is technically filled with eight electrons. But you're going to see later that you can put more in, but the outer level gets filled at eight. And then if there's extra electrons, they actually get tucked into inner levels. But just remember, outer levels are filled with eight electrons. Okay, that's a rule to live by. Electron levels, electron energy levels are filled with eight electrons. But that first one is filled with just two. So, if I were to, uh, let's, let's draw an atom here. I'm going to make uh, neon. Neon is an element. I'm going to draw one atom of neon. Neon has um, 10 protons, which also gives it 10 neutrons, which will also give it 10 electrons. Okay, I'm going to draw electrons outside it with dots, and I'm, I can't draw 10 protons and 10 neutrons in that center nucleus because there's not enough room, and I can't write that small. So I'm just going to write, 10 protons and 10 neutrons in that nucleus. But really what they would be would be 10 little ball protons and 10 little ball neutrons all packed together that make up the nucleus. Keep in mind the nucleus isn't like a circle that holds protons and neutrons. The nucleus is the protons and neutrons packed together, okay? So what I have now is I need to add my 10 electrons. Remember the rule, I fill the inner level first, and the inner level is filled once I have two electrons in there, okay? And for later, we're going to need to know which electrons are paired and which electrons are not paired. So when we are learning this electron configuration now, we're not going to pair our electrons until we absolutely need to. So. If energy level two here can hold eight electrons, that means it can hold a total of four pairs of electrons, okay? So we're gonna separate our pairs out. So we'll put one here, one here, one here, and one here. So that's where our four pairs are gonna go, and I've added one each of one uh, electron there. But I need to add more because neon has 10 electrons and I have two in the first energy level and I have four now in the second energy level 
but to get my 10 electrons, I need to add more. So I have 2 plus 4, 6. So I'm going to add 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so now I have drawn my neon with my 10 protons, 10 neutrons, 10 electrons. And if we take a look, I filled that first energy level first with two electrons. The second energy level I then filled, and it's completely filled. It has eight electrons. Even if I had to add more electrons, I couldn't in this case because that level is full. If I needed to draw an atom with 11 electrons, I'd actually have to add a third energy level around that atom and put that last electron in that third energy level because the second one is completely filled. And then the third thing to remember that I did is I kept them unpaired as long as possible because later on we want to look at unpaired electrons and be able to count how many there are. So I need to make sure I keep them unpaired as long as possible. Okay, let's draw another atom over here. Um, let's draw about oxygen. Oxygen has uh, eight protons, eight neutrons, eight electrons. Okay, so in my nucleus, that's where I have my eight protons and my eight neutrons. Okay, and now I need to add my electrons, eight of them. So the first level, one and two, and now it's full. So I get to move on to my second level. Three, four, five, six. Now remember, I need to add two more to get to my eight. And I've kept them unpaired as long as possible, but since I have to add two more, I'm going to have to make two pairs. Nine, uh, sorry. 7, 8. 7, 8 electrons there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 electrons. So if I can see here, if I wanted to find my unpaired electrons, it would be this one and this one. And then I have two pairs in the outer level. Okay. So the outer level is not full. If I had to add more electrons, I could. Um, but since it's an oxygen atom, I keep it at 8 electrons. That's what it looks like.